All right, we're diving into wide receivers once again. Our consensus wide receiver rankings part two. A lot of very important names, differing opinions. We got some news to talk about. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the video. Great Scott, if my calculations are correct, you are listening to this before your fantasy football drafts have taken place. I have been to the future. And those that follow the advice from the Fantasy Footballer's Ultimate Draft Kit had a spectacular season and with certain many victories. It's almost as if Biff had given each of them a copy of Grey's Sports Almanac. I'd highly recommend heading over to www.ultimatedraftkit.com without any further delay. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in, one and all. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back with you. Monday, August. Eighth, the dream team back together. But we're without our um, Christian Leitner. Al Borland is not here today. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Did you know who Christian Leitner was? Yes. Just barely, though. Yeah. Not, not uh, a lot. 30 years ago today, they won gold. Oh. Really? Oh, yeah. 30 years ago today. Happy anniversary. They won all eight of their games by 30 <laughs> points or it, more. It seemed really unfair at the time. It seemed awesome at the time. If you <laughs> if you weren't a part of the OG Dream Team, I remember getting together. Like you know, I was a kid, and uh, it was special. You get together for for like a, a dinner, and and friends and neighbors came over to just watch America trounce. Just and the other teams, the other teams were like getting autographs, and like they were yeah. so happy to get dunked on because the U.S. is like, hey. We we have this game. We've been playing it a really we in, long. We time. invented it. Yeah, like we we got this game. It's great. Uh, here's here's the rules. Oh, also we're playing for gold medals now, and here's our best players. Well, we were always winning them, even with the collegiate players. Were they? Yeah, we just decided to win by more. What? <laughs> I thought we like finally didn't win one. Or something. Yeah, we we had lost one. We got and one silver. And that was yeah, was the one then then <laughs> they sent the pros over. Yeah. yeah to I the mean, uh to the amateur sports exposition, right? I, first of all, Jason should not speak ill of any of this. This is exactly how Jason would approach anything oh, he wants to win. Heck yeah, yeah man. Jason's all in on. I will absolutely use superpower on and like you know, like look. if you could enter like when you were a kid playing T-ball mm -hmm. or whatever, little league you absolutely, if you were legally allowed, would have entered the younger kids' division. Yeah, I mean, if I yes. could right now go play you know, right. uh, with some some you know middle schoolers, <laughs> oh, heck You yeah. would wear that gold around your neck? Mm -hmm. Jason was, like, all in on the Monstars. Uh, <laughs> he was sure? Team Monstar? <laughs> yes, he was. Uh, welcome in, one and all. We've got Wide Receiver Rankings Part 2 on the show today. Uh, we got some news to talk about. I feel like camp right now. This is like a game of dodgeball, and you hope your guy doesn't get hit. Yeah. Right? I mean, because the odds are just every team's in camp. They're running uh, drills, and you get three texts a day about somebody going down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've already had one that came through this morning of like, uh-oh. Hold your breath. Christian Kirk did something. He's on the side, but it does sound like he's okay. It, but, yes, now is the time for those to come through. And you, you, you never know. With is it okay? A guy got hurt. He left the 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 field, and you're like, it could be serious. It could be absolutely nothing, but you have to move forward like something is wrong. I get the sleeper alert. Yep, that says player X has changed from healthy to questionable. Oh yeah, and yep. sometimes <laughs> see that before I see the news, and I'm like, how questionable are they? Uh, but we got a lot to cover on the show today. Reminder: ultimatedraftkit.com. If you want to pretend you can go back in time and buy it, just go buy it. Sure. And it's like you had it, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's the best tie-in I can have to the intro. Uh, jointhefoot.com. That's our community. Had some people on Twitter reaching out 
asking where they can get involved with the community, find leagues, find players, like-minded players. Join the foot.com. You get an extra show every week. What else we got going on? We had a bunch of incredible listener league entries. Yes. Oh, so my thank goodness. you for sending those in. We are in the process of deciding who is in. It will not be everybody that deserves it. Absolutely Unfortunately. not. No, I, it, it will not. We can't have this be like a 50-person league. be too difficult. We already have it as a 14-team league, and uh, thank you so much to everyone who's submitted those, and uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, uh, incredible efforts. And in preseason, we actually get not Hall of Fame game yeah, baby. games. Happening. Yeah, baby. <clears throat> so if you want your Isaiah Pacheco like hype Ooh. train to continue going, <laughs> preseason is built for that. Yes, it right? is. Um, before we get into the news, quick question. Will Kareem Hunt be playing for the Browns <laughs> in week one? Oh, this, this one put get this in, in as the quick question. <laughs> Um, okay, so news came out this uh, uh, this weekend uh, that Kareem Hunt requested a trade. And if you were not with us uh, a month or so ago, maybe a little longer, when Kyle the Borgogan, or Ky sorry, Kyle the idiot, and uh, mm, oh, myself wow. had a skerfuffle over whether or not Kareem Hunt could be cut because he has a zero dollar dead cap, and we fought about it and we argued about it, and so. The, my timeline blew up when this news came out. Like, oh, he's requesting a trade. Now, why he's, would that be? Why do you think that is? That would. Why be, do you think that your timeline blew up, Jason? I think because the Foot Clan are excited about mm. uh, all are of our Are they idiots arguments. too? No, no, okay. no, no, right. not at all. They are brilliant, yeah. uh, beautiful out people. Why everybody jumped in? So, well, no, they were just showing me the news. Like, hey, check. This <laughs> oh yeah, 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 they, yeah. They were on my yeah. side, uh -huh. and. Uh, so, anyways, the question here of whether <laughs> Kareem Hunt will be a Brown in Meanwhile. week one. Yes, he will be a Brown week one. Uh, I don't know that he gets a new contract, and I don't know that he's willing to really hold out, uh, you know, in, in the meantime. He I was not. already back yeah. to participating in team drills on Sunday. Um, it, it's, it's a really tough situation because the Browns took a uh, – you know, it took a chance on Hunt when it seemed like he might not even get a team. But at the same time, you're a running back in the NFL. You, if you don't get your money when you can, you're just yesterday's garbage. Yeah, the, seems like they have a type. <laughs> sure, oh. sure. Uh, but for Kareem Hunt, what is interesting here? Like he's not going to hold out. He's practicing. He's extremely valuable to this team. But like if Deshaun Watson, because we're still in limbo of what's going on with that with the NFL appealing, if Deshaun Watson is suspended for a full year. What does the team do then? Are they more willing to listen to someone uh, and trade Kareem Hunt away? They do have Dearness Johnson, who in his limited time as a fill-in starter, he's shown that the dude can ball. He's been excellent. And uh, I, don't, I don't think they'll do anything in, no. in, by way of, like, if Watson's not there, they're going to try to win the division. I mean, yeah. they, they competed with Baker Mayfield, who, you know, they moved on from, and they can compete with Jacoby. I, I I know they will believe that. Uh, well, that's all that matters. And but the question is just like if you're not going to re-sign Kareem Hunt, and you're the the management of this team, like taking a realistic look, like is it better for us to get something for Kareem Hunt? That's that's the only way I no, see I, him I moving hear you. on. But but I, that I mean, having said all but that, will another out team the scenario trade and pay him? I mean, is that the view of Kareem Hunt at this point in time that they're going to make an uh, 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 right before the season trade because if you trade for him you have to pay him right it yeah, would be that just doesn't seem to happen for running backs it would be a it, not necessarily a you have to pay him but it would be a your starter got hurt in camp and now you need someone who's sure. who's absolutely proven sure. and the trade would get done for i uh, what a fifth a sixth round pick oh, yeah. it, would, it would not take It'd be a, nothing it would take a day 3 pick to get him Kyle and, Kyle didn't get to speak i mean do you have anything to add yeah, Kyle bring it here I just think there was a percentage chance he wouldn't be on the team, right, Jason? Uh, that was not the argument. The argument was whether or not he would get cut. Uh, and there is no chance, 0%, no oh, mathematical oh, door man. open for him to be cut outside of off-the-field crazy a, new issues. Is that a Jason Moore guarantee? That is a 100% oh, ironclad, locked and loaded guarantee. Also, Kyle, I love you. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's you just called a, him an idiot. It's just a I love a lot of idiots. That's fine. <laughs> it's just a skerfuffle. Yeah. 
I mean, it's not a full drag out. All right, into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. ESPN reporting Elijah Mitchell continues to look like the clear-cut number one option at running back camp. Have, also have seen Jeff Wilson uh, news that he's looking a lot better. I would say that there was multiple multiple reports this at the end of last week saying Elijah Mitchell looks fantastic. He's the one getting all the opportunity. It's San Francisco, so things uh, like promises get crazy sometimes. <laughs> and but But this is the information we're moving forward with that you know, in the fourth or the fifth round, you could have the starting running back for a high volume rushing team. All right. We have uh, <laughs> the aforementioned uh, Isaiah Pacheco, seventh round running back for the Chiefs. Does this just, does it never stop? No, Do I have to stop I, it? I think, you, I think okay. this is on you to stop that train. This is on us to stop the train. But I'm, Are you I'm, trying to stop it? I have. Go ahead, Jason. I'm not trying to stop it. I actually think it's pretty important for us to bring the name up because we didn't really talk about Isaiah Pacheco much in the draft process. You Due know, to him being a seventh round running back. Well, that's the thing is like pre NFL draft, right? We're not. I'm not a college guy. I I go and I scout the the in more the, ways than one. The top. 20. <laughs> I do have. I'm great. not an educated person. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but you know, I, I go and I scout the top like twenty running backs pre NFL draft, and then after the NFL draft happens, if if there are some surprise picks, I'll go and scout those guys. And even after that, you know, I, I knew the name, but I hadn't actually watched Pacheco. And then he was a seventh round; he was the twenty second running back picked in this last year's draft. So obviously, the NFL uh, viewed it kind of the same way that the pre draft lists uh, viewed it, which is. Not a big deal. But I went back and I actually scouted him this weekend because he's getting this buzz. I really like this tape. Sure. He's a 215-pound back with Burst who had a lot of big runs. And, um, you know, there's some things that are bad. Obviously, seventh-round draft capital. Who cares? And, um, you know, a four-year starter for Rutgers where he was, you know, good, but not some prolific all-time, uh, you know, NCAA back. But the reality is I, I've been reading a lot of beat reporters because I've been curious way more about Jarek McKinnon and Ronald Jones. Where do they fit in? And ev multiple beat reporters have basically said that there's a huge competition there and that the only thing that's sure right now is that Clyde Edwards-Alaire and Pacheco's spots are safe. Those are the two that are safe. That's so that's crazy. that's really telling to me that he's going to be at least on the roster. And, and when it was drafted, it did not seem that way. One of the pieces of that safety is his special teams ability. Yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, he can return. I, I did the same thing. I went went and scouted him this weekend. There was a player that jumped off at, when I watched him play. He's a very busy runner. Like he just moves his body all the time. And it reminded me of another player, who when I reminded myself of his draft capital was identical. Seventh round draft pick, same height, same weight, same running style. Ahmad Bradshaw. Mm -hmm. They were 10 picks apart. I think uh, Pacheco was uh, 730 and the other one was uh, 740 or something. But um, there were 10 picks apart, and it, it was the player you reminded me of. But seventh round draft picks, like, it, it, they just rarely work out. Like, are you competing – for Derek Gore with the last pick of your draft type of situation. Yeah, this this is. I mean, we don't want to overblow this. This isn't. This is a name you just need to be aware of because he's a rookie. He's two hundred fifteen pounds and ran sub four four, and he plays on a great offense. There's a chance that he's on your dynasty waiver wire. Too. That's the that's the 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 real call out here is if you're in a dynasty league, go check, and if he's available on the waivers, pick him up. I know he's not in any of our leagues because I have him. That's true. Wow, they were picked two fifty and two fifty one. Yeah, those he's two. He's just the. Like Clyde Edwards Alaire, in he's more like a you know he'll get you ten yards or whatever. He just he, he doesn't have breakaway speed. Now Ronald Jones does, but I mean he's he's he comes with a, a different set of baggage where Pacheco is really fast, and if the team likes him, I, I I think you could see him as the number two guy on this team. But still a lot of a lot of room to, or a, a lot of time needs to pass, and we need to see that he can actually function in the offense because you can have guys like Tyson Williams, who are the most athletic running back on the squad, but the coach is frustrated with you not knowing the playbook and, and not being where you're supposed to be. 
You're right. Christian Kirk banged up this morning. Doesn't look serious. Bears don't have any more wide. I mean, we already <laughs> the thought they didn't have Bears, wide receivers, man. right? Yeah. But then Goodness all of the gracious. ones with wide receiver next to their name are now hurt. Byron Pringle, quad injury. Nikhil Harry, high ankle sprain. Um, Bayless Jones. Bayless missing Jones, practice. missing practice. I mean. Those are all of them. That's 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 the Other than Darnell court. Mooney, who's in a bubble somewhere. Yeah, Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet. The, the thing that I've liked about those two guys is that it projects to be a one-two punch. Now, this isn't a great offense, so you're not going to have uh, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill results, but you'll probably have you know, market shares. You know, it's going to yep. be uh, not uh, you know a huge pie to begin with, but it's probably just going to be those two players soaking up everything. Uh, Devin Duvernay back at practice for the Ravens, currently lined up opposite Rashad Bateman as a starter. David Bell off the pup for the Browns, which would be more interesting if they had a more trustworthy quarterback situation. Mm -hmm. I like David Bell a lot, and I don't think Amari Cooper is, you know, he'll be the dominant target this year, but, like, the future is bright for David Bell. Like, next year, like, if you want to pick him up in a keeper league, like, next year could be very interesting. I completely agree. Da David Bell and George Pickens, to me, are the two guys that I don't expect big things for this year necessarily, but, man, do I love their – outlooks going forward any other news donald parham gonna miss a week with hamstring injury after we talked about him that's our fault uh apolo apologies uh yeah. it it will be something to monitor because hamstring injuries they can be troublesome yeah you guys want to talk wideouts yes mm -hmm. wide receivers all right we are back into the wide receiver rankings our consensus half point per reception rankings. On Friday, we covered the top 10 wide receivers, ending with... Uh, with my guy. Mike's best friend, Michael Pittman. Mike's best friend. Yeah, I know. Uh, we're going to start at 11 and go as far as we can. If you want to see more of the rankings, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. 11 is Tyreek Hill. He belonged in the top 10. I don't know how you two hooligans put Michael Pittman up there instead of Tyreek Hill, but uh, look, we, we have a lot of questions around Tyreek Hill's transition to the Dolphins. Last year, 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns, wide receiver six in fantasy. So to be honest, 11 is really not that bad. It's more, it's more I would not be drafting Pittman myself over uh, Tyreek Hill just from what I value on my roster. We talked about Pittman being – Good, not great. Tyreek Hill is great. Um, but concerns. New quarterback, you've got a target hog in Jalen Waddle, right? Like he is a volume mm -hmm. receiver that has explosive ability in and of himself. So, and when we have the data, we know that teams, uh, players changing teams score 21% fewer points on average in their first year. Wide receiver switching teams. So fantasy-wise, it's not normally a good thing. Now, in recent history, we've seen some success with top names. We've seen – Sure. Uh, and we're, we get to put it to the test again this year with Devontae yeah. Adams moving and Hill moving. But, you know, Hopkins was great. Diggs was great in recent history. So, you know, the camp talk and buzz and, you know, there's not a day that goes by. I'm not reading Dolphin beat reporters talk about Tyreek Hill, you know, torching their best DBs over the top and being found by Tua. But, look, it's camp. Tyree Kill is very easy for me this year. Like I, I, I feel pretty clear on what he is for fantasy. That's which, good because I don't. Yeah, I mean, look, Tyree Kill is absolutely a dominant wide receiver who can torch DBs, get his own. He will be good. He will be very good for fantasy. Uh, they paid him enough money, and he will be the one for this team. But he is not going to be great. Um, he is not going to be the Tyreek Hill of old where he is the number one wide receiver in fantasy or even a top three guy. You're going from an offense, you know, last year Patrick Mahomes threw the ball 658 times. Tua was on pace for 507. Now, obviously, adding Tyreek Hill, having year two Jalen Waddle, I expect those numbers to go up. I've got him uh, right now uh, projected for 593 passing attempts. But this isn't as prolific an offense it's not as good a quarterback, and there is a lot of target competition here 
or at least more so than just having Travis Kelsey as the only other player. So to me, I think he's going to be a fine fantasy asset that finishes right around where you draft him, but you don't have the unknown crazy upside of a wildly successful finish, in my opinion. That's just not how I think the cards will play out as with him as a Dolphin. Mike, comfortable with him as your wide receiver one if the draft fell that way? Because um, I think I am. I... I'm not. Uh, it's it's hard with him saying like comfortable as your one. I'm I'm fine with the second round draft capital because uh, that's I mean that's where he's going with an ADP. I have him projected way under uh, what his ADP is currently going as like the wide receiver seven. I have him outside of my top twelve. Uh, I mean last year with Patrick Mahomes, you had eight games where he was not a top forty wide receiver. Like his consistency was all over the place. Yeah, he, I mean, he finished as the wide receiver six, but like, can you count on that that amount of boom games from the McDaniel uh, system and and Tua being the quarterback? I mean, he, like last year it was you know how is Tua even going to be the quarterback for this team moving forward? There's just it, there are so many things that that freak me out about Tyreek Hill that more more than likely for my teams I'm just I'm going to let someone else take him there in the second round and deal with the consequences. Let me tell you the two reasons why I have more confidence in Tyreek Hill. Number 1 is that the average NFL team runs 65 plays a game and I just don't think you can contain somebody like Tyreek Hill for 65 offensive plays. So the explosive plays are still going to come. And number 2 is how would we be viewing the Jalen Waddle where would he be going if the Tyreek Hill trade didn't happen? Sure. He'd be going right around where Tyreek Hill's going right now. Yeah, I, so it's kind of like the excitement for Waddle would be through the roof on what he would evolve into. And the hope would be, man, maybe Jalen Waddle can someday become a player like Tyreek Hill. So I think that we're viewing one with a very negative lens, and we we're going to view the other with a very positive lens. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Well, and the problem for both is both. Yeah, like, it, say, if, it, if you if, didn't replace Jalen Waddle with Tyreek Hill, you added, and so yeah. they will take away from each other. I think that's the the huge issue. If it was Tyreek Hill by himself or Jalen Waddle by himself, then where they're you know that that second round draft price is is good. I think that they cap each other's upside though. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I mean this team would have to take the step of being one of those offenses that you know, like the Bengals, where you feel very confident in two options. Um. But, I mean, Mike's right. Even if he accumulates, let's say he puts up the exact same stat line, there's still a world where you're a little bit frustrated with the pick because of the games where that those big plays don't happen. Um, but he will be a very polarizing pick in your fantasy draft. I wouldn't be trusting average draft position on ADP, or I mean on Tyreek Hill as often or as as consistently because I think he's going to be some people's favorites and he's going to drop in other drafts. Now, speaking of a player that is a number two on an offense sitting here at 12, T. Higgins. In mock Man. drafts, <laughs> in mock drafts, do you feel what I feel with T. Higgins, which is that he's everybody's darling. That's what I feel like in mock Twitter, drafts. Twitter loves T. Higgins, yeah. Mock drafts and real drafts. I mean, I, I, right. I mean in real drafts, T. Higgins goes – you know, right around this spot, people are expecting him to, even though he's a wide receiver too, to have the same kind of volume that Jamar Chase has, even more volume with a really efficient, good quarterback. And his talent, I mean, you, you want, you really do in fantasy football want youthful guys. When you can see a really young guy who has shown the elite talent on the field, that's the fantasy football sweet spot. The arrow is pointing up, and so I think people are trying to get ahead of it and hopefully have that um, you know, that, that year that I comp this team to for, that the Arizona Cardinals had back in 2008 where Larry Fitzgerald was the wide receiver one and Anquan Bolin was, I think, the wide receiver seven. I think that's a legitimate outcome for these two players. The problem is while that is his ceiling, like he, he has that. And I think that there's good odds he hits his ceiling. He is being, you know, drafted around there. That's my concern is he's being drafted at his ceiling. He's being drafted as the wide receiver 12 from week nine on last year, which was that peak run. He was the wide receiver 11. The first eight weeks, he was nearly droppable 
Didn't help your fantasy team. Mm -hmm. And we can excuse all of that under the Burrow wasn't throwing a bunch. He was getting back from injury. But I do think there's a pretty significant game breaker difference between Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. So I am a little concerned about uh, him reaching this level. It, I, I, I'm in though. Like, it, like for the for the draft price, you're saying you know at the back of the third round, you can get T. Higgins. Who, I mean, over that stretch run, man. Like after the bye week, T. Higgins was seen like a 23 percent target share, uh, and just w with the accuracy of Joe Burrow. I know I've you know poo pooed the 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 ADP of Joe Burrow, but that doesn't. I mean, I think he's a bad quarterback, and I want his weapons on my team. So to be able to get T. Higgins as a wide receiver too for for your roster, like if you went, you know, running back, wide receiver, wide receiver to start your draft, or or you're you know planning on going hero running back, and you get T. Higgins as your two, I think that that would be a spectacular start. You know, I have problems with these so-called wide mm -hmm. receiver twos. Yep. Has always been your self-acknowledged uh, hardship is buying in on high level well, team wide receiver twos but the uh, the data shows you know on average over one team a year has two wide receivers in the Did top Did you just say over one team a year? Yes. On average. On average over one team it's like 1.3 teams per year uh on average have two wide receiver ones from the same team and if you're talking about two wide receiver twos from the same team uh, that's always, you know, three or four teams every year have that. So See, you that really scares me even more because you're telling me there's one team a year that does it and he's being drafted as a wide receiver one already. Mm -hmm. So I think he's off my board. He's off your board. I think that's a mistake. I would ne I, I would rather draft a Mike Williams or Hollywood Brown or Allen Robinson two rounds later than drafting T Higgins at his, as is at his peak. Well, I will say this, your strategy talking about I would rather draft those later round wide receivers. I I don't have any problem with that. I mean, we've been we've been seeing this a lot. Those first couple round running backs, they they dry up quickly. If you're not talking about those top 4 wide receivers, then you know, it, you probably are better off instead of grabbing, you know, a a late round 2 wide receiver, early round 3 wide receiver there are still great running backs there whereas there aren't good running backs in the late fourth fifth sixth round those are trash running backs and there are great Mike Williams type wide receivers there so strategy wise I would agree with you final question for you Jason because you haven't ranked the highest of the three of us are you comfortable with him as your one if he I mean he's ranked as a one for you if, he you, is. if you went running back running back and you're in the third round, and you said, I want my first wide receiver. T. Higgins, is you comfortable? I would be disappointed with him as my wide receiver one. I have him ranked as a wide receiver one, but there are more... Higher upside th players? or Well, put it this way. Um, I have him ranked one spot ahead of Michael Pittman, but I would rather have Michael Pittman be my one because I think he projects to have more surety as far as volume. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right, quick break. Back with Mike's best friend, Cor yeah. Cortland Sutton. All right, Corlin Sutton comes in at 13 on our consensus wide receiver rankings. Mike is the highest. He has him as a top 10 wide receiver, has him at 10. He's got a fifth-round ADP, delicious. Mm -hmm. That's a delicious uh, place to yes, pick is. up Corlin Sutton with the upside built in with Russell Wilson's arrival. Mike, I'm sure you have Sutton to say about this. <laughs> oh, yes! No, um, can I just uh, – that was – I disagree with that. I think that was excellent. I actually enjoyed that immensely. Well, you got an applause button if you want it. You know. I, I don't, unfortunately, because they replaced it with this, we built this uh, <laughs> okay. great graphic okay. of me and my best friend, Michael. Pitt. All right. Isn't that fair? <laughs> uh, that's what you get. <laughs> All right, Mike. All right. So break Cort it down. Cortland Sutton. Uh, so it, in my opinion, Cortland Sutton has shown in the NFL that he can be a true number one. Uh, you had his his sophomore year where he broke out with bad quarterback play. I mean, you're, it was basically Joe Flacco, uh, but he finished the year with 1,100 yards and six touchdowns. And now you have Russell Wilson coming in, and Russell Wilson since the year 2015 has had at least one top 15 wide receiver, at least one. 
Because, because, Every single year. Yes. And in that time, Russell Wilson's averaging over 30 touchdowns a year. And last year, I mean, it was a very weird year for the Denver Broncos and the wide receivers on that team. Cortland Sutton had two touchdowns on 98 targets. And that, like, if, if Cortland Sutton had just hit four or five, you'd be a lot more comfortable with him. He probably wouldn't be in the fifth round. But he only had two touchdowns. Players in the 90 target range last year, you had, like, Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd had five touchdowns <laughs> in the 90 target range. Russell Gage had four. Meanwhile, Cortland Sutton, because his quarterbacks were so bad, only had the two touchdowns. The Broncos wide receivers, it wasn't just Sutton. They had eight receiving touchdowns on the season. So I just I see Cortland Sutton. I project him as the number one. I still think that Russell Wilson has it. I think the the end of last year was just that he came back too soon from, from the hand injury and he could not throw a football. Just watch, watch the tape of the ball coming off Russell Wilson's hand. That's not what it normally looks like. So I'm very, very confident that Cortland Sutton is going to have a massive year. Yeah, I mean, I, it's hard for me to imagine a world where Russell Wilson does not have a top 15 wide receiver on his team because it has just never happened. Um, and if that's the case, there's the question of, well, is it Judy, is it Sutton? I think Sutton has proven far more on the field than Judy has and with the sad injury to Tim Patrick, now there's a little bit more clarity as far as, you know, Tim Patrick was another big-bodied receiver. Well, mm -hmm. the big-bodied guy is Cortland Sutton, and I think he's going to develop a great rapport with Russell Wilson. I'm I'm all about – I mean, you're talking about a guy who's being drafted as the wide receiver 20 in the fifth round. This is No, the, yeah, he's in the sweet spot. This is the perfect example of, like, I don't want a running back who's mediocre or questionable or with so many red flags in the fifth round – when I can have the upside of a Cortland Sutton who projects to be a very potential wide receiver one. And I think Sutton has higher upside than T. Higgins does. Okay. Because of just the explosiveness on that offense and him being the projected number one. I, I watched a lot of camp film of Sutton. He is the leader of the running back or the wide receiver room. He's enormous. It was ridiculous looking yes, at how is. large he is. But look, I'm not standing in the way of the Cortland Sutton hype now that Tim Patrick and his 85 targets has gone away. You know, Hamler and Judy will be uh, very involved, but this is going to be, you know, the most most sure bet is Cortland Sutton and that uh, humongous frame. He's a dominator. Yes, and, and, it, and the offense, like the last year, the numbers from this team last year, those those are gone. You have to completely throw them out. You have a new coaching staff. You have a more uh, a more pass friendly offense. You have a coach who like a, a management team, they went out and got Russell Wilson. They 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 paid the piper to go get him. Like, they did not bring Russell Wilson in to be a game manager like he has been for Seattle. And not just get him, persuade him. Right. There was a an element of that in the pursuit of Russell Wilson. What, Russ didn't just want out. He wanted out with control of the offense. And this is the closest situation to Stafford arriving with the Rams last year and people kind of suppressing the draft value of those players like Cooper Cup. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think this is the most similar situation where it's pretty in front of your face, but the draft costs, at least right now, aren't there yet. And Nathaniel Hackett, the new head coach for the Denver Broncos, he was just recently talking about how this is Russ's offense. Like, he's going to be able to call the plays. Ru he's giving Russell Wilson freedom to run Russell Wilson's offense, and that's what I want in fantasy football. Yeah, no question. DJ Moore comes in at 14. I've got him at 11. Jason at 13. Don't read, don't read my ranking. It's Mike. Like, don't read it. Mike has an opposite best friend don't, graphic for don't read it. 17. Um, it makes me sad, everybody. It makes me really sad. I mean, DJ Moore is going to put up a ton of receptions and a ton of yards. He's so good. He's so good. The NFL is a travesty what has happened to DJ Moore. 1,100 plus yards in three consecutive seasons, four touchdowns in three consecutive seasons. That is the problem. Now, I don't have the quote in front of me, Kyle. I don't know if you saw this, but this is big news. <laughs> Talk about a battle? Carolina is going to be announcing its starter <laughs> at quarterback. Uh, it's going to take place later. Okay. Oh, okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's, I, I, it's later. We got uh, uh, the camp battle between... Uh, Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield is raging on. Thankfully. Now, is Matt Corral part of that, too? Is sure. he getting a fight? Ja Rule says whatever goes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Taylor Heineke talk about 
<laughs> did you see him? The no. backup for the Washington yeah. Commanders. Um, in a press conference, they just basically said, "Do you do you consider yourself having any shot at like winning this job?" And he's like, "No." <laughs> Good for you. He was Taylor. so honest. He was just like, yeah. he's like, this is a business. He's like, if you're paying somebody thirty million dollars a year, they're gonna come in and be your quarterback. I just got to be ready. I'm the backup. Yeah. It was just like the most plain, smart, non jaw rule thing to say. It'll be Baker. Yeah, which the the latest reports are Baker has the edge ah. in the training camp battle. I mean, whatever you do, <laughs> don't give him all the reps. It's shocking stuff. I know. That I mean, I feel like the, everybody in the entire Panthers organization knows the answer, but they're all putting on a skit for Sam Darnold. <laughs> yeah, for that's what I think like, it is. I think it's like, for Sam Darnold. When you walk around, I mean, because you need a backup in the league to have some confidence. When you walk around and see Sam, everybody's like two thumbs up, like, yeah, you, you got, got this, this buddy. Are they, Keep yeah. fighting. You're going to be the, fine. The DBs like pulling their punches on coverage because they're like, oh, man, what a ball, Sam. Yeah, this is like doing the – Oh, incredible. It's like when your kids draw a picture for you and you tell them how pretty it is. I mean, you're just protecting them a little bit. Yeah. But it will be – Yeah, be it'll Baker. be Baker. And that, that offers a glimmer of potential for DJ Moore. Don't undervalue the return of Christian McCaffrey in the offense and what that does to open up scoring opportunities, moving the ball down the field. He is the key that unlocks red zone opportunities. DJ Moore has had so few of them, in part because Christian McCaffrey has been gone. This has not been the offense that you would hope. You know, we make fun of Sam Darnold, but Darnold would have been much better with a healthy Christian McCaffrey as well. So, DJ Moore, it's a bet on, you know, you're going to have a baseline of production, which I love, right? You've got a player that's proven, established, top 24 wide receiver. Can he take the next step? It's going to be, can he get to seven touchdowns? Because seven touchdown DJ Moore is going to outperform his ADB. Yeah, seven, seven touchdown DJ Moore, and that's that's exactly where I have him, I think is going to be good at the end of the year. I still worry um, about the process of getting there. If you look, he's been, you know, you say, oh, what a consistent wide receiver. He's been 1,150 yards, mm -hmm. four touchdowns every year. He has consistently been super inconsistent. He has monster games. He has stretches where he just completely goes away because it's a bad offense with bad quarterback play. The question is, will Baker fix that? And, you know, uh, I, I do not believe, I like, Baker is a clear upgrade, but he is not the answer to the problem. He's the he duct is, tape. He, yeah, he's he's at best the flex seal, trying to keep that water <laughs> right, in. Right. Yeah, the and, water is trying to come in. But it's you know it's a it's a it's a leaky boat. It's a bad team, a bad roster, and uh, you know Let's stick with this. Let's stick with so this. So it's it's just one of those things where I don't want to overdo DJ Moore because when I first did the stats, I was like, man, he's super high. He's he's in my top ten, but I would not draft him there because. We have seen enough inconsistency. Like, for instance, he was he has never been outside the top 20 in uh, a fantasy finish outside of his rookie year, and yet his consistency score uh, on the fantasy footballers is a C. Yeah, he, no one's ever happy. No, nobody's been happy with the process, and I think that he'll get a couple more touchdowns, be better, but he's not going to be what we dream of him being. You know, if Russ had come here, DJ Moore would definitely be in my top 10. Well, and maybe that puts him on the probably not drafting list again because he's going ahead of all these those four names. You know, Sutton, Mike Williams, Allen Robinson, Hollywood Brown. He's going ahead of all of those guys with more question marks at quarterback. Do you want Russ, Kyler, right. Herbert, Stafford, or do you want Baker? Yeah, and you and that's the problem. The inconsistency of like how is he going to be used in the offense? Like can Matt Rule figure this out where you had Matt Rule's first year 66 receptions for DJ Moore was, you know, 1,193 yards, 18 yards a catch. And then this year, 93 receptions, so almost 30 more catches and fewer yards because he was down to 12.4 yards per completion of, like, how is he going to be you? What is, does Hopefully Matt that, Rule have any idea what he's doing? Because two years ago, Robbie Anderson, no. very involved, got things done in this past year. You're like, well, Robbie Anderson's considering retiring. He's having to change the spelling of his name. Like Matt Rule Robbie. Is, Matt, Matt, Matt Rule 
is causing all kinds of problems for the Carolina I Panthers. I forgot about that. He changed his name. Yeah. Yeah. From so Robbie to Robbie. 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 Wait, to IE? I. E. Robbie. Robbie. Did I miss this? Was this a bit on the show already? It no. just became one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You Robbie. are a part of this. All right. Yeah. Keenan Allen at 15. Robbie. Just keeps getting it done. Keenan Allen. Yeah. Um, last five seasons, averaged 102 receptions, 1,100 yards, six touchdowns. He's being drafted as the wide receiver 11. I really don't have a problem with it. I think people might be a little bored mm -hmm. with Keenan Allen, but he will probably be Keenan Allen again. And in a full PPR, he's going to clean up each and every week. I think I'd be comfortable with him in a PPR as my wide receiver one. I love Justin Herbert. Yeah, full PPR is where he thrives because he's not a touchdown guy. You know, you, you've got enough data. Tell that to DJ Moore, man. <laughs> DJ Moore is envious of this line. Yeah, I mean, his, DJ Moore has been How'd living in the force. How'd you do it, How'd you get six? How'd you get the six? Uh, six is such a beautiful number. Now, you know, he's got Justin Herbert. So if he gets eight touchdowns, great. I mean, there's always upside here. But he is 30 years old, and he plays a role that is closer to the line of scrimmage, more of a possession, move the chains type of guy. Yeah, points so, per first down, you'd be all right. Yeah, points for, per first down, fantastic. Uh, full PPR, fantastic. If you're in a half PPR league, I find myself usually going somewhere else, but I don't mind, like, uh, but I feel stupid when I do because he is, uh, oh, here, what do we know about him? We know he's a great wide receiver. We know he's the number one target for a great quarterback. We know he's been successful forever so it's like yeah just draft them and don't overthink it and I find myself often and by often I mean always overthinking it going for higher upside someone that could have 12 13 touchdowns and have a break out season versus Keenan so like you know Pittman versus Keenan if I'm on the clock and I'm looking at those two I find myself take a Pittman and I realize that like safety wise it's yeah. the wrong picks Keenan is the much safer pick but he just doesn't you know, I, I view him that he doesn't have that top five upside, which because he is, doesn't, he doesn't really have the top five upside, even with Herbert. No, no, okay. I mean it, it's uh, look. I don't think Mike Evans is top five upside. That doesn't make him not a, a great draft pick necessarily, but I, I, I don't think Pittman does either. You so I, I know he doesn't, <laughs> but um, yeah, Allen, you, you kind of know what you're getting at this point in his career, and that can be boring for fantasy, which can make him a value. Now he's not on average. Maybe that should tell you something. Wide receiver 11. But uh, let's move forward. Brandon Cooks. Let me paint you a picture. Here's your picture. You spend the first two to three rounds leaning in on running back. Maybe you snag yourself a little Mark Andrews in there. Okay? You roll around. Man, heck, maybe you even go for a, a Kyler Murray. Maybe you've got a top tier. Maybe you've got a Josh Allen on your team, and you're hitting running backs. you got some of these onesies because you just, you're just living life. Sure. You really want one of these onesies. Just throwing caution to the wind. And then your starting two wide receivers are Cortland Sutton and Brandon Cooks. Yeah. That sounds pretty good. That's not a bad <laughs> life to live. Like, if you want to take that, if you want to live on the edge, maybe you, you've always wanted to have Travis Kelsey on your roster, just like Jason did in the last mock draft. Mm, I wanted it so maybe bad. Maybe you wanted George Kittle in the fourth round, like yeah. Mr. Mike Wright. I'm telling you, the world where you end up with Brandon Cooks and Cortland Sutton is not a bad world to live in. Brandon Cooks is usually when you draft him. Yeah, I mean the onesie argument you're making is 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 a great one for Brandon Cooks, but usually he is at least your wide receiver three when you draft him. And as Brandon Cooks being your wide receiver three, that is fantastic. Here are his fantasy finishes: twenty last year with a rookie Davis Mills, fifteen. Then he got injured the year before. 13, 12, 9, 14. All different teams, all different quarterbacks, all different systems. They love him. They've said he looks unbelievable in camp and that he's got an even better rapport right now with uh, the general. General Mills <laughs> going into year two, I think that uh, there's there's a great connection here. And if, if – what is his floor? I think his floor is wide receiver 24. Like a, okay. a low-end wide receiver two is his floor. He's just been around and done it so much that nobody ever respects him or wants him. That's why he's going in the sixth round. And he does find a way to score. I mean, he has got game-breaking speed. Davis Mills, look, I got more confidence in Brandon Cooks than Darnell Mooney in that situation. Got more confidence in some ways in Brandon Cooks and what I'll get week to week than I would in DJ Moore. Yeah, absolutely. 
So uh, I, I think he's a steal right now. Wide receiver 26 off the board. Mike, you've got him at 13. Yeah. You want to add anything to this? I mean, is this I, confidence in Davis Mills or just confidence in Brandon Cook? It's it's confidence that Davis Mills is a lot better than the NFL thought he was. He's a lot better than we all thought he was going into you know the start of last season. And then look, they they gave him more money. I always you know I, I like when a when a player has a bag of money. And we got Nico Collins. We got Chris Moore. Now, who did they a, just sign? Kyle, who did they just pick up? Texans. Do you remember? Oh, well, they were looking at Sneed, I believe. No, they check it they out. signed uh, a free agent wide receiver that was going to amplify the point, but whose name it, I now forget. But it's that, like, that does amplify <laughs> the point. What you just did <laughs> you. really Thank drives you. home the point that but, it is Brandon Cooks' the, team. It's Brandon Cooks as the number one. and Oh, it was a Chester Rogers? That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Like, point proven. Yeah. This, this wide Philip receiver, Dorsett, Chris Conley, and Chester Rogers are on this roster. This wide receiver core is Brandon Cooks. Like yeah. Brandon Cooks at the end of this year having a odd 27 28% target share. You go, "Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes sense. He probably could have used a few more targets." He is going to dominate the garbage time universe that the Texans are going to live with. Oh, that delicious garbage. I mean, they're going to live tw they're going to start the game 14 points down. That's yeah. the, they they've opted in. Let's uh, let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. Then just give all the yards to Brandon Cooks. Um, A.J. Brown at 17, 25 years old. Mike's got him at 14, Jason 15. I'm at, I'm at 19. Dummy. Uh, I am dumb? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. You're welcome. I don't think I'm going to have any A.J. Brown this year. He's wide receiver <laughs> 10. Uh, what he does for Jalen Hurts is more than what Jalen Hurts does for him. I think A.J. Brown is a great physical specimen wide receiver. He has struggled with consistency, even when put in good positions. He is awesome. But I don't think he's going to be awesome every week. And I think he's been frustrating for fantasy players to have on their roster. And I don't think that's going to change with Jalen Hurts. And, um, you know, we it's been kind of talked about a ton this offseason. The passing volume, the story here is, can A.J. Brown be awesome for your fantasy team if the offense is run heavy, if Jalen Hurts is, is contributing around the goal line, and, and I don't know if you're going to get wide receiver 10 um, delivery here. So that that's my case. I'll get out of the way. You guys are much higher on A.J. Brown. Yeah, I mean, the I think A.J. Brown is going to be great this year. I, I really do. Um, I've got him as wide receiver 15. I think he's talented. I think he'll be the clear number one target. So far through seven practices, he has been the clear number one wide receiver target. Uh, he's 20 of 27 with three touchdowns through training camp right now, including a Beautiful 30-yard fade touchdown uh, that was just shared around this morning. That being said, I've got him right now as my wide receiver 15. He is being drafted as the wide receiver 10. That that is that that means that I probably won't have as much AJ Brown share as I want. What we know about him is that he is a dominant alpha wide receiver that can just make DBs look foolish. We talked about Tyree Kill. He's he's just you, you've got 65 plays a game. How how often can you stop him? How often can you scheme out Tyreek Hill's speed? Not often enough, not 100%. How often can you scheme out A.J. Brown's physical beasthood? Uh, <laughs> that, is a, that is a technical term. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to do. You, you know, you got to juice up them cornerbacks. Print the hashtag beasthood shirts today. <laughs> oh my so, um, you but know, he's finished outside the top 36 in 42% yeah. of his career games. Yeah, it, that's the that's the hard part about him for me. But the good part is nine games as a in nine top five games in his first three years. Like so he wins you he, weeks. Yes, and I mean you do want some of those players on your team. You embrace the volatility that not every week is going to be fantastic. I I spent so much of the off season of AJ Brown was like he was ranked in my twenties and. I wanted him to be my ice player for the ice and fire show that we just had That's right. recently. And I'm like, I have to be sure. And I took an, a whole nother deep dive into things. And I ended up moving him way up of, of uh, what I believe that he can get done with the, you know, just whatever volume he gets looking at how he did with Tannehill, which Ryan Tannehill is a more effective passer at this point in Jalen hurts. I don't think I'm, being hot takey saying no, that right no, now. No, not at all. But 
for them to make that investment of the trade and then giving him the contract extension, like AJ Brown's going to be the guy. And I think he's going to be fantastic. Now, having said all that, I'm still projected under his ADP of, I have him at 14 right now. He's going in the middle of the third as the wide receiver 10 and, you know, oftentimes higher than that. So it's very difficult to get on board with the ADP. But if you're willing to withstand some of those, you know, finishes outside of the top 50 wide receivers because he's going to give you weeks as the the number one overall wide receiver and win the entire week by himself. If you're willing to embrace that and build around that for your team structure, I think he's a fine pick. Does he have top five upside? I don't think so. I don't think there's enough passing volume to be top five. If they Hopefully he can stay healthy. Yeah, that's, he's, he's that's also – He's been banged up the last two years. That, that's a fair uh, assessment of him. If – if the Eagles go back to the passing volume that they opened up the season with, then yes, he could hit top five, but I don't think they'll reach those levels. Yeah, I agree. I think they'll pass more yes. than the end of the year, but not as much as the beginning of last year because they won a lot of games doing what they were doing late. All right, uh, let's move on. All right, dig dig through the muck, the murky, terrible PR offseason for the Cardinals. Hollywood Brown coming in at 18. Now, he, I mean, realistically, we're much higher on Hollywood. Sure. So uh, stifle the uh, biases. Yeah, I mean, so uh, he, here's here's my view on, on Hollywood. I think that he would uh, be set up for massive, massive success coming, reuniting with his college quarterback and Kyler. Uh, while DeAndre Hopkins is not there for at least the first six games, we already know that, he is going to be the wide receiver one on a high-powered, fast pace of play offense that projects to score a lot of points, throw a lot of yards, and he has been great. Uh, you know, he was the wide receiver five through week nine last year, and that includes a bye week. So the talent is there. Everything is set up for success. But I, right this second, I still worry he's got the hamstring injury. He's back. He's not. He's not participating in – like, he's back. He's on the field. He, he You know, he's not arrested from his uh, – you know, from his – You're saying he's not in jail? Yes, he's not in jail from his criminal speeding. But he is not playing right now. He's not He's not going full in, in team practices. They're still kind of nursing the hamstring back, which is, hey, great. Like You haven't got to see the rapport you'd like to see exactly, between him and Kyler. Exactly. I mean, I know they had it in college, and it's a similar system – but that's years, years and You're the ago. highest, I believe, of the uh, three of us. I have him at 16 right now. We're pretty grouped, though. Of 16, 18, 19. For an ADP, someone going barely in the top 24, Andy 18, Jason 16, I'm at 19. So we I do, think we're weighing the top half of the season yes. heavier in the value it provides to fantasy players. Yeah, and well, it's not just that. It's like looking at, at the DeAndre Hopkins last year. All of his success at the beginning of the year was, I mean, he was pulling in touchdowns, which, okay, Hopkins, maybe you can continue that, but the yardage was awful for DeAndre Hopkins. Then he couldn't get back on the field with the injury. Then he gets popped for uh, trace amounts of a PED, and, like, Hopkins is getting older. Like, there's just I, – I have some real questions about Hopkins when he's back. Is he truly just right back to the number one? Odds are – yeah, he probably is, but there is at least room for doubt. And inside of that doubt, Marquise Brown, if he comes out and has a a, a great six week run, they're not just gonna turn the uh, the offense upside down and say, "Well, we got to abandon this thing that's been working fantastic for us." Yeah, I mean, he is the future wide receiver for this team. Yes. Hopkins isn't the future. You know, Hopkins is thirty years old, and he's gonna be great. Uh, but when they're building, you know, this young core of the offense, it's Hollywood Brown and uh, and Kyler together. And if you look at where the money is, you look at best ball drafts that are going live right now. Marquise Brown's being drafted right around where we have him as the wide receiver, eighteen off the board. All right, Jalen Waddle talked a little bit about him earlier. Number nineteen on our consensus rankings. I got him at twenty one. Mike at twenty. Jason nineteen. Very similar there. Twenty three years old. Put up one hundred and four receptions in his rookie season. Uh, over a thousand yards, six touchdowns. Finished at sixteen. That's where his ADP is, sixteen. So we're actually all a little bit lower than where um, the average is. 
Most receptions ever for a rookie. Obviously, the story is Tyreek Hill and his target demand and coming into this offense and um, stifling the upside of Jalen Waddle. He's he's someone that I have a real hard time with in drafts because I think Jalen Waddle is exceptionally talented. He is as fast as Tyreek Hill. He is younger and uh, obviously already had the connection with Tua from last year. So there are arguments at least to be made that he could be he could finish the season as the wide receiver one over Tyreek Hill that's not how I have him projected that's not what I think is going to happen because yeah. of the money but as far as just talent and uh you know it, he's going into year two where he was already one of the most dominant rookie wide receivers in year one of all time it, it, the arrows should go up and the thing is here is we saw this last year with T Higgins T Higgins was a guy that I really loved coming off of his rookie season. It seemed like he was going to be phenomenal. And then they went and got Jamar Chase. And T. Higgins took a back seat. But he was still really, really good. And that could happen here with Jalen Waddell. The problem is Tua. Allen Robinson at number 20 on our consensus rankings. 29 years old. Well, not yet. How dare you? Oh, he's not? How dare you, Kyle? When's his birthday? Late August. Two weeks. Yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're 40 now. He's he's twenty eight point nine eight. Thank you. <laughs> we were talking Allen Robinson this morning. That's that's why uh, oh, okay. that got brought up. Look, I'm I'm extremely high on Allen Robinson. Uh, I've made this this argument on the show already, but uh, this is an opportunity he's never had. He's in an elite offense. He's a primary target. He's been great at camp. He has been uh, he was heavily pursued, paid by Sean McVay. And um, look, you you don't even look at last year, correct? And you look well, at you, you. I mean, you can you try not to. Yeah, you try. <laughs> How many teams did you have Allen Robinson on last year, Andy? Not as many as you. Yeah, yeah. You 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 had a heart. I mean, you you it's, went through the thing of you held and held and held and held, and then finally you traded him, and even then you were happy because you got something. Oh yeah. For him before nothing happened. I mean, his highest fantasy finish last year was 27. That was one week that I think he scored one touchdown. I mean, it was like he finished 27 with under 10 fantasy points. And yes, like if you in your drafts, use the recency bias of Allen Robinson destroying many souls last year. Use it to your advantage. And I, I, I'm, you know, I'm joking around about uh, like of how bad it made me feel. But it did. I mean, it did. It made me feel like crap last year. But you got to shake that off. Andy is 100% right on, on everything that he has said. That it's it's also, you know, well, we're in the off season here. So that means it is the annual time we say, well, Allen Robinson is now playing football with the best quarterback of his, his career. Something that, some statement that we have said, you know, each of the last, I don't know, four years. But it really is true. You're going to Stafford and the Rams, and he should slide immediately into what a 22 23% target share at on the low end or uh, like a, as a fair average so if he hits those numbers in the target share Allen Robinson is going to be fantastic I mean I was very low on Allen Robinson coming out of last year I didn't care about them signing to a big money contract um, when you are as bad as he was last year 410 total yards one touchdown was on the field the majority of the season then you're washed you're done and that was my view of Allen Robinson I don't usually get swayed by I I, I don't like to, training camp videos to hype a guy up or or you know be too responsible for a change in opinion but the reality is either Allen Robinson is washed or he isn't and the training camp videos make it pretty clear the dude has been dominating guys. He's looked great. He's looked athletic. He's, you know. 30.7 million guaranteed money on a $46 million deal. If Allen Robinson is not washed, and it does not appear he is, then he is the wide receiver two for Sean McVay, Matthew Stafford, who just created Cooper Cup last year, and is a, is a great pick. All right, we're going to stop there unless Mike has anything on was, Robinson he wants to add. Yeah, I was just going to point out that like Robert Woods before the ACL tear was it was a really slow start for him, but he really got it going and it's like both, he was the wide receiver 11 before injury. Exactly. So yeah. like Robert or uh, not Woods, uh, Allen Robinson and Cooper Cup can both exist and have 
spectacular number. And Robinson can score. Like it's yeah. not outside the realm of possibility. He puts up seven to ten touchdowns. Agreed. Uh, that number. What did C Cooper Cup have last year? I believe it's twenty eight thousand touchdowns. <laughs> twenty eight thousand. So there's he has some to spare. Yeah. Uh, the next four on the list: Deontay Johnson, Darnell Mooney, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Jerry Judy. You can see all of the wide receiver rankings on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can jump into the UDK and see all of the projections down to uh, the risk rating and the reception totals and target totals and total yardage. All of those numbers in the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. You guys have anything else to add? I do not. All right. I'm very excited for preseason to start, though. It's going to be fun. Stay healthy, Matthew Stafford. All right, that is going to do it. Thank you for tuning in, but guess what? Another show tomorrow. Amazing. Whee! Take See care. you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>